Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Group Chat. I am your host, Leon Scorpius, and with us is co-host Sparky the Dog. Yo! So, it's been a while, Sparky. Lots have been happening in the video game world. Yeah, yeah, it's been... Uh, and this past week itself, especially, has been really exuberating. 2017 has been an amazing three months or two <laughs> two months uh, for the video game community. And we are going to start to talk about the probably the biggest launch that, uh, according to GameStop, for, uh, from a console perspective, is Nintendo's Switch console that, uh, if you don't have already, I'm sure many of you are jealous to have. Uh, but this this Nintendo Switch launched. Yes, it did. It did. Launched, launched last week. Mm. So uh, pl- gamers have had a few days to have their hands on it. Um, it didn't come without its, I don't know, bumps in the road. Well, you get that with all console launches. There's always going to be some kind of problems here and there. Nothing too drastic, I think, for the Switch. I know a lot of people complaining, mostly about the uh, left Joy-Con going out. I have not had that problem at all. Most of these problems people are reporting, I haven't experienced at all. You know, I watched a really cool YouTube video where this guy literally bought a Switch and dropped it on concrete 11 times, and I was very surprised. I'm going to stop you there. I do not think that's a cool video. (laughs) It's a cruel video. (laughs) Um, Yes. I I, I do not condone console abuse. (laughs) But yeah, it one thing Nintendo's always done is made a sturdy product. Like you had that, you had the same sturdiness with the GameCube and the 64, and so it's something I come to expect from Nintendo is they're the Nokia of the console world. Yeah. <laughs> so for you know, two ninety nine ninety nine, um, the console released and. For a while, I mean, people didn't feel like they could get their hands on it. All the pre-orders went out. But I actually heard mixed reviews that if you went to your local GameStop or your local Best Buy, that they actually had some non-pre-ordered consoles here and there. So people mm-hmm. that were waiting in line actually were able to get their hands on one. Yeah, and you get that all the time. It's like with the uh, Wii launch, we had a some me and some of my friends, we camped outside of a GameStop all night to be first in line for pre-orders. And then one of our other friends felt left out because he couldn't make it. And so we ended up camping outside of Best Buy's, out of like, uh, well, FYE, which is a, used to be a media play, but same thing. And we were able to go in there, launch day, get one for my friend. And so it's one of those things that's, even if a lot of places, especially like, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, they'll get more systems than they actually let out pre-orders for. Now, I heard the Neon controllers are actually the hot ticket. So if you are able to still find a Switch out there, it's it's likely just the the black Joy-Cons. But the Neon Joy-Cons um, were pretty popular. Um, do we feel like Nintendo will have a Joy-Con strategy from a color perspective, much like they do with their 3DS systems? I think they will eventually. It's probably something we won't see until maybe at least six months down the road, maybe even more, up to like a year or so. I personally, I was not a fan of the neon Joy-Cons because they're both two different colors. I think if both of the Joy-Cons were the same neon color, I'd be a bit more excited then because I like more symmetry with mine, which is why I went for a black Joy-Con all together so it could just all be one color. Now, our last podcast, we were talking about the hype leading into this launch. Now it's finally been March. We have the console in our hands. And what's what's the verdict as a, as a gamer? I'm assuming you're playing a lot of Zelda. I am playing a lot of Zelda. Um, I've been taking it to work, playing it on my breaks and stuff, and just like stressing out with it being in my locker. <laughs> but... Um, I'm enjoying the new Zelda game. I've never, I didn't, haven't had a chance to experience it on the Wii U, but from what I've heard from reviews, it runs better on the Switch. And a lot of the features that they put into Zelda that weren't in other Zelda games makes it a lot better. Like being able to climb on anything, 
like almost anything. You can just climb up, you can jump on command, but it also makes things a bit more different because like instead of doing a jump attack by just pressing Z and hitting a button, by pressing the attack button by pressing forward, you actually have to jump and then hit the attack button while you're in the air. Now, as most game review sites, they've had their hands on it prior to launch and release. So at release, literally you saw all these reviews that are, you know, 10 out of 10s or 9 out of 10s, uh, almost across the board. <laughs> and a few of us just had to, when, just in watching various Twitch streams, we're just wondering, was it a little overhyped? I mean, where do you feel it truly lands on a, a 1 to 10 scale? I feel it's a little overhyped. Like, I wouldn't necessarily give it a perfect score. A lot of it more kind of feels more kind of like a Skyrim to me. It's just the open worldness. It's something I enjoy, but it's also something that always distracts me from the main story of the games. I have the same problem with Fallout. I just get distracted by just exploring the world. And this is a huge overworld. For Breath of the Wild, it's insane. It's, I would say it is bigger than the overworld for Skyrim or Fallout. From what I've experienced, I don't know if it's actually true or not. It just it feels bigger to me. I'll say from a strategy perspective, I think Nintendo did an amazing job of picking a game at launch that really pushes the limits mm. of this system. I think when we first heard about the Switch, there was all those demos with Skyrim running in the background. And I think that Breath of the Wild having that Skyrim feel yeah. open world. It, um, it definitely shows it's we can do this. Yeah, and, and I think that it's exciting to think about the potential of having a lot of these AAA titles on a Nintendo console. Now, I think everybody's on the same page. They're not going to compete with the PS4 or Xbox One with regards to graphics quality, etc. But you have a console that is mobile um that picks that's probably picks up more as a mobile console than let's say the vita and their remote play mm -hmm. options do on the playstation side um but that's pretty cool it is and it, it's fun it's like it's an actual home console but i can take it anywhere with me and i enjoy that i also really enjoy the fact it uses a USB-C for charging because i have a lot of those cables yeah, you know, I think Nintendo did take a lot of steps in the right direction with regards to adopting, you know, USB-C, etc. I think that it's still, you know, from a firmware perspective, there, there's a lot that needs to be done. The UI is a little, still a little clunky. Yeah, there's still a lot of issues and stuff, like mainly like storage space and the uh, save data that you can't transfer it or save it onto another file. So there's no way that you can back up your actual saved games as of now. Nintendo has kind of made it seem like that they might include that at some point with a patch, but there's no telling if they actually will or when. So this weekend we did get our hands on some of the other open or launch titles. Specifically, I got to play a little bit of Bomberman and I will say that was a, a box full of nostalgia, very fun. Uh, the Joy-Cons definitely felt um, usable. I mean, there was no point where I was like, this is kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Like when I first tried it earlier that Saturday, I was having difficulty actually controlling with the joystick. And it's like when you're playing single player, you can actually use the uh, directional buttons underneath the left Joy-Con to move around and that helped me a bit. But when we were playing in a group setting and you have to use the joystick, I had a lot more difficulty with that. But fun factor wise, you know, if Nintendo follows their same Nintendo formula and bringing the Bombermans, bringing in Smash Brothers, etc. I mean, do you still think that formula works for the Switch? Yeah, yeah, it definitely works great for party games. It's also works great as a single game single player form. So it's something they've done better, I think, is incorporate the partiness that was the Wii and the Wii U that made it a bit more personable. And I feel like it's going to take a while. I mean, Nintendo launches are typically, you know, software light. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not an early adopter 
myself of consoles. So, you know, the first title, which is funny, is actually an old title, is uh, if I pick up a Switch, would probably be uh, when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe comes out. I think that that might be a cool title to pick up, certainly. Especially since it comes with all the DLC content 100%. Already. Yeah, I love that they're doing that. Um, and then, you know, actually later in the year, Skyrim doesn't look half bad either. <laughs> I've never played Skyrim, so, I mean, that might be something I'm interested in. Let's talk about value. $299.99. Uh, a little bit under... Um, you know, some of the crazy Mac console launches in the past, but it's still hefty. It, it is hefty, but it's still on the cheaper side as far as consoles go. And so it's like Nintendo's always been more on the cheaper side. It's been more family oriented. It's like we're cheaper, we're better, we're kid friendly. And I think that's a strategy Nintendo always has in mind when coming up with new ideas is is this going to be something enjoyable for everyone? That's my dog Sadie in the background. She is adorable, but she is very um, feisty at something. <laughs> She's probably angry that I have not purchased a Nintendo Switch yet. Yes, that, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, so while you and Tay have purchased Nintendo Switch consoles, I picked myself up a new Nintendo 3DS XL. It was my first new Nintendo 3DS. And it's actually my first XL version of it. And I will say I'm loving it. It has It's the yellow Pikachu edition and it is adorable. And it was everything I wanted in a special edition 3DS. And it was $299? It was $199.99. But it, to your point, it didn't come with anything. There was no game bundle, etc. It was just the console yeah. itself. Um, I actually spent the two ninety nine, um, sorry, two dollars and ninety nine cents or whatever on the Pikachu theme to go in it. So, um, but from a value perspective, I mean, that's that's what we're talking about. You're talking about a yeah. hundred dollar difference between having a three DS XL with. The titles that, again, there's no contest. Nintendo is a powerhouse with regards to mobile, um, portable gaming, I should say. Not necessarily phone mobile, but these portable consoles. Uh, the DS has been fantastic. But you're looking, I was talking about only a $100 difference from being able to play 3DS quality games mm -hmm. to now um, games that, you know, what's it, barely sneak 1080p or something on, uh, on the TV. I forgot yeah. what the... The switch I, i'm not actually sure what the actual specs are off the top of my head right now either but yeah it's it's affordable and and so you mentioned earlier that it's not up to a point where it can compete with the playstation for an xbox one but that's never been a problem with nintendo is competing they've always in my opinion been at the top especially outside of the u.s so you go to japan they're just a powerhouse over there yeah, and so many of us, I think, we always feel that gaming is a cheaper form of entertainment, right? I mean, it's it's either spending a couple bucks on a game, or you know, going to the movies every week, or going out to have mm -hmm. dinners with friends, or, or or shopping in general for clothes and whatnot. Uh, that it tends to be a cheaper form of entertainment. And I feel like if there's enough titles like Breath of the Wild, you're going to get that value. You're going to be playing that game for a month. So if you only spend $50 a month on a game, uh, there's a lot of value there. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the problem that comes into play is you also have titles like 1-2 Switch that you know, arguably was one of the weaker titles at launch and it it was more of a tech demo than it was an actual game like Wii Sports or I, I think part of the problem one two switch had was they didn't highlight all their games. Like when they showed it off several months ago with the Switch stuff, they only covered like two or three things, so it made it seem like there's like only four mini games. But it's got a lot more mini games to it. And it's like since finding that out I've actually been kinda more intrigued and interested in buying it. I haven't yet, but there's still a, pos a prospect that I may pick it up within like the next month or two. And what are some of the other launch titles that you're hearing from friends or online that are worth getting right now? Um, definitely Bomberman. And there's another one, I can't remember what it's called, but something snipping. 
Oh, like snipper yeah. clippers. I, I don't know if that was like a I, I've been early hearing, release. I've been demo hearing big or... things about snipper clippers. We'll take a Think look. it was snipper clippers. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm horrible at these things. <laughs> it's like I was saying to Tay in uh, Tay's place. It's I have a hard time remembering a lot of the detailed information because I'm such a casual gamer. One, I got one, two, switch. Um, snipper clippers. Nope, I'm not. I'm not seeing it, but there was. It, there is a. It. Um, there is a YouTube video from Nintendo going around about people that are able to. Oh, snipper, snipper clips. That's what. It is. Snipper clips. Yeah, and it's like only twenty bucks for a game. It's, I don't really know what it's about, but it's. I been pretty popular from what I've been hearing and I think part of that is because of its $20 price tag and I'm not seeing on here but um, what is the switch eShop like obviously it's light and I don't it's, think that it's even available or how is it connecting it, it's it's there it's just not a whole lot is there and it's like maybe like just you go in and there's info to log in to the account, connect it, add funds. And then there's like a page of coming soon games and a page of games you can buy now. Because there are some games that I'm, I, I don't know if there's physical copies at the stores, but in indie games like Shovel Knight was uh, on, on there. I am Setsuna. I saw a lot of mm -hmm. uh, ads on social media about that going as well. So, I mean, there are other games than just the big. Yeah, there's titles. a lot of indie games out for it already and even more coming soon. And so it's. And those are type of games that you can find in the digital shop. Mm hmm. All right, very cool. How is your Zelda playthrough going? What are you thinking about? Uh, how is the feel? I've heard you text back and forth to the group about just some exciting things that you're seeing. Um, so tell us a little bit about Zelda. Uh, well, from my own experience, the uh, the Zoras were kind of annoying me at first because like when it, you first run into them, it's like just some of them outside of the Zoras domain and they're looking for a Hylian and they just keep popping up and they just automatically brings up this text and they all tell you the exact same thing and it's like it's they're like all of them have Navi DNA in them and just like hey listen <laughs> this is important and it's like well if you stop interrupting me I can get it taken care of <laughs> but you keep interrupting me <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more about Zelda from Tay and yourself once you play through a little bit more through the game. And so we'll have a future podcast just yeah. talking about Zelda Breath of the Wild. But if you are interested, uh, Tay is streaming Breath of the Wild from time to time. So take a look at his Twitch page uh, for more information on Zelda. Now, I must say that I haven't really played much of Zelda because of Horizon Zero Dawn. And that will segue to our next topic, Horizon Zero Dawn. It really sucks to be an Xbox One owner right now, don't you think? Oh, yes. I believe I saw a comic about it online the other day. Like this person just like going on. It's like PlayStation has this. Nintendo has this. Xbox One just has Halo Wars 2. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. PlayStation 4, I mean... You, you've had Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Nier Automatica just released this mm -hmm. week. You had Uncharted 4 not so long ago. I mean, there were a lot of AAA titles on the It's been almost Sony a side. year for Uncharted 4. That was last May. Oh, I'm still seeing it in like stores as buy this now. That's because of the, how great that game is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just a lot to play on the Sony side. I, and what's been overwhelming is, again, these are AAA like story driven titles, but you still have people playing Overwatch and you have people playing Destiny still, even though, you know, those are both multi console. But. Yeah, these well, but their their console of choice tends to be the <laughs> PlayStation 4 and you know, I have friends that are playing Final Fantasy 14 still on... 15 and 14? The, the MMO. MMO, yeah. Yes. So you have all of these games that you can play whenever that have really, really long play lives. 
Um, and then you also have these big AAA titles. Like, when do you, if you're a PlayStation owner, when do you have time to play all these games? And see, that's a problem I'm having right now is because, like, I still haven't finished Final Fantasy 15. And a part of that's, that's right, of, Final Fantasy 15. And that's, that's, part of that's that. because of the open world concept of it. Yeah. And I'm not that far in Horizon Zero Dawn because of the open world concept of it. It's a good it. problem it's, to have. Um, I have all these games I haven't finished. I just got a bunch more Lego Dimension sets in last week, and I just. I've only built the sets. I haven't even got a chance to play with them at all. I have two story packs I still need to go through, and it's just it's getting overwhelming of all the games I have right now. Luckily, I have a break because I'm not getting anything until next month when Persona 5 comes out. Again, yeah. A Persona <laughs> 5, I've heard so far, is, is going to be an amazing game, too. I, I did get to play a demo of it at PlayStation Experience last year, and I loved it. I'm still annoyed that it's been delayed so long when it's already out in Japan, but I am getting the uh, Still Your Heart Collector's Edition, and I will be doing an unboxing of that one. Awesome. Um, let's get back to Horizon Zero Dawn. Of all the AAA titles in the month of February, I definitely feel like, I think, was it February or was it last week? Horizon Zero Dawn? It was, it was last it week. It was last week, week, but it was February it was before, 28th. Yeah. There you so go. It was the last day of February. Last day of February. It's beautiful. It it's a gorgeous, gorgeous game. From the yeah. gameplay style, what, what's it feel most like to you? Um, if you had to compare it to another game. I'm not sure I could actually get it compared to an actual other game. I mean, like, a play style for me is, I tend to be more sneaky with it, so I'm kind of, like, playing it more like a, you would play... Like a Metal Gear? Kind of like Metal Gear, but more like a Sly Cooper. Okay. And so it's I'm I'm sneaking around. I'm like the, the other day, my girlfriend made a comment. It's like this person's out riding on robot dinosaurs, and you're just crawling on the ground. And it's like that's what I do. I crawl on grounds. I go up to the robots, and I just get them from underneath and just kill them in one hit. So I've been watching. I have so I have not been playing Horizon Zero Dawn Boo. myself. I am Boo. watching Horizon Zero Dawn because it was actually my wife that picked up the game, and I would most relate it to the Tomb Raider series. I just I really feel mm -hmm. that there's a lot of cool third person action there, and you know there, you can put some relationship to the to having the bow. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where it's extremely complex. There's a lot of, there's an item and loot system and having to combine that loot system to create the right, you know, rock, paper, scissors and scenario like, against these. Not just, you, you can use it to create your own ammo. You use it to expand your inventory. I, have, I already have all my inventory already expanded and I'm like nowhere near as far as your wife is. <laughs> Yeah, but Man. Super B, she's she's surgical almost. Like I'll I'll see her spend a good amount of time planning out her routes, planning out. Um, there's a tracking system where you yes. can see the the paths that these creatures are moving in, and uh, it's very surgical about it to to knock some components out just to make um, to make that kill just a perfect kill. I've spent like five minutes just hiding in tall grass waiting for one of them to get close to me so I can sneak attack it. And so it's definitely a waiting thing. And it's one of the great things about it is like you compare it to Tomb Raider, I compare it to Sly Cooper. It's, it's a game that fits multiple different play styles. Yeah. I've heard, you know, I've seen, I've heard even fallout comparisons. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of different comparisons. So I think that, you know, this is gorilla is one of their, their, better nice. games and you know they're going to be rewarded for it certainly um what's your favorite part about horizon zero dawn i would have to say the story is really intriguing it's... i would have to agree i think from a story perspective i was surprised it, it felt like the quality of a bioware mm -hmm. it, it felt like the quality of um you know the the mass effect like, series almost like... My going into the game, I was thinking the story is just going to be focusing around how these robots came to be, how they took over the world, and 
getting to a point where humans to flip it over and get back on top of the food chain again. But then they just threw in a whole bunch of other stuff in there. I don't want to give away spoilers or anything, but it's just there's a lot more in-depthness to the story than what I was expecting originally. Yeah, very well done. Very well story driven action adventure. Uh, it has that third person clunkiness to it. So if you're not, if you're more of a first person shooter, it'll take you a moment to, to catch your breath on how to <laughs> control. That's one of the reasons why I'm more stealthy is I have a hard time with the shooting arrows and stuff. Well, but I'm getting better with it. So it's most of my stuff. Like I have almost all the uh, sneak tree maxed out and I'm only like level 11. And so it's like I, I'm sneaking when I'm even running now. So it's the great thing for me. I don't have to crawl around so much anymore. Yeah, but I crazy. Just... I don't know what the tree is called, but my wife, I, I swear, she's just committed to all the attack ones. So she's doing like double, triple damage every time that she hits somebody with a spear. And I've also been working on the foraging tree. Yes, which so. <laughs> she picked up a foraging task skill the uh, last night and was like, why didn't I pick this up a long time ago? It just makes it a lot very easier. first one I took, because uh, they give you like two points or like they give you a bunch of points to put into stuff in the beginning. I put it into sneaking and into foraging and I've just been going off of that. So I worry about the big attack stuff later. Don't care about it. I'll just go and sneak attack everything I can and strategize a bit more for the bigger machines so we're just getting started we've got mass effect andromeda coming up are you picking it up i'm not picking it up i want to but i'm trying to be good it's birthday's coming along i try not to buy things close to my birthday now we spent a lot of time playing <laughs> mass effect 2 i don't i don't remember how much we played mass effect 3 um, I played a lot of Mass Effect 3 because they introduced the uh, multiplayer in Mass Effect 3. And me and Ayame would spend just hours just playing that online. I mean, those the, those modes were fantastic. I know that, you know, unfortunately, uh, they, they're struggling a little with the beta. They said the multiplayer is still going to be in, in Andromeda, but we'll see mm. what that's going to be like. Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I, I, I kind of want to go back and finish Mass Effect 3 because, <laughs> to your point, I think I got sucked into the multiplayer and I don't remember fin actually finishing the story. It, I would like to go back and finish it, but I'd have to start all over again. And I would have to, for me to do that, I want to start over with one again and work my way up through again. Because I, I play a female character most of the time anyways. And so like in one, I did a whole romancing of Caden. And this actually showed up on my uh, memories thing recently on Facebook about me complaining about Caden in Mass Effect 2 <laughs> and how much I hated him. And like, if I ever go back, I'm going to kill him off in the first one. So I don't <laughs> have to deal with his bullshit in the second one. But um, so, yeah, Andromeda coming out March 21st. It's not related to the first three Mass Effects. So if you're playing for the first time, totally cool. Um you know, something that I think I'll be picking up is actually the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 remix. It's going to come out at the end of the month at March 28th. I'll probably be picking that up again eventually. I got the uh, remixes on the PS3. I know. It's like how many versions it's like, do loyal fans purchase? Now, now it's on PS4. And so I need it on PS4 as well because I have 2.8 on PS4. Right. Uh, for a lot of people, it's all about the achievements, apparently. <laughs> Um, but a lot's still coming up. It's it's going to be a crazy time. Injustice Two, uh, you know, coming out for Sony is on the Sony side as well. Um, on the Nintendo Switch side, we have um, the Splatoon games still to look forward to. We've got Mario Kart Eight coming out in April. Um, I think Binding of Isaac plus or whatever is coming out and i we actually talked about that on the last podcast of how those type of games i think are going to have a lot of value on the nintendo switch um for me what i'm playing right now is actually i'm still playing pokemon sun and moon <laughs> you're trying to go competitive yeah <laughs> the competitive scene is actually really fun it's funny because pokemon is one of those games that if you want to get into competitive it's easy to get into as long as you're following 
whether it's the meta or, or you know what's what's happening in the scene there's tons of websites that help you build your teams uh, but there's a lot of rng that's involved with competitive pokemon so literally all you have to do is have a really solid team a lot of luck um and just being able to make the right decisions at the right times but you know it goes back to to, to full circle and the start of the conversation is that you know nintendo is going to be able to sustain its business model as if it re- launches these AAA titles that people are still playing mm-hmm. and it has a replayability. Um, right before we played Bomberman, we actually were on the Wii U playing Mario Kart, Kart and Super Smash Brothers, and it's crazy how amazingly fun those games are, even years after you know it was launched on that console. <laughs> and it's like I remember hearing a rumor somewhere like last year about. Nintendo planning on releasing a Pokemon game for the Switch. That was, yeah, that and was the one thing that I haven't seen yet. That, that will be the biggest thing for me right there is if they come out with a Pokemon game on the Switch. That's a mainstream Pokemon game, not like the Pokemon Coliseums, like the other console games were, or Hey You Pikachu, when like an actual Pokemon game. <laughs> now, there was a lot of rumors in the forums that... Pokemon Sun and Moon actually has a coding in it that allows for the following of, you know, Pokemon that that follow you. No different than, you know, in, in previous generations. But I was thinking more for once it gets to a higher power console like the Nintendo mm-hmm. Switch, um, the potential of having those features. Now, I think that'd mm-hmm. be super cool. There's also a potential with the uh, storage capacity that they have for the Switch. For the cartridges they're using, there's also a potential for having multiple regions in a game again, like in Gold and Silver, which is one of the reasons why Gold and Silver is my favorite. It's because, like, here's this new region, and after you're done conquering that region, you can go back to Kanto and explore Kanto two years after the events of Pokemon Red and Blue. Now, I'm just throwing it out there, and I'm hoping someone from Game Freak will pick it up, but... Are we getting to the point of a potentially having a Pokemon MMO where you literally can travel throughout the Pokemon regions, worlds, Pokemon <laughs> worlds, and be able to to compete, um, choose your home region, and have all these adventures where you're visiting gyms and <laughs> and and actually catching these region specific Pokemon's in their in their world, right? Yeah. Um, lot to look forward to. Uh, thank you for joining us on this group chat. We are going to be talking about a lot more topics very soon, uh, including including Mr. Tay himself and uh, asking him a little bit more about Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, what else are you looking forward to, Sparky, before we close things up? Uh, looking forward to us talking about or just in general? The in gaming general world in the gaming any, world. Um, <laughs> I'm mostly looking forward to Persona 5 right now. It's... Fell in love with the Persona series that laid on with Persona 4. Played some of the others since then. I just absolutely love the series. Um, for me, I'm looking forward to breeding a competitive Pikachu for Sun and Moon. <laughs> it's going to happen. I've done it every every, every season. Uh, I'm going to try to get a competitive Pikachu in there. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Good night or day, evening, whenever you're watching this. <laughs> this is Leon Scorpius and Sparky signing off. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos by us, click the thumbnails. It should take you to one of our latest video antics. And, as always, be sure to like and subscribe to help us out. Or you can click here to support us over at Patreon to help us create even more quality content. Until next time, thanks again for watching.